Here we'll see how to use a reverb pod to do this onboarding screen with dots indicator. Now, in general, if you just want to do this onboarding screen, you don't need a state management package. But since we are going to update our dots over here, so that's why we need a state management. And here we'll use reverb pod to do that. All right. So first, some basic ideas that we have to understand. Now this has been done using page view. Now page view is a Flutter widget. So we we're going to use that one to do that. Why? Because if we use page view, we'll have a reference of the index or the number of pages we have on this screen. So that's the first reason why we are going to use page view. And at the same time, we also have to use page controller. Now page controller helps us the scrolling. So this is also scrolling left and a right so in fact as we do the scrolling our index as we do the scrolling we get the index and if we get the index we can send that index to this page view and from page view we can save the index and the saved index could be used over here to show a certain dot has been updated as the page updates so hopefully it makes sense let's go ahead and get started so after all this talk, we understand that we have to work with this index, our index number, because first we have to get the index and save the index. And once we save the index, then we'll update this dots with that index so that we can get colorful, right? So for this reason, first we are going to go ahead and create a class. And this class over here, we call it welcome state. You can name it actually anything. And then we extend this class using equitable. Now this class extends equitable class. Now we do that to know that if two objects of this class are same or not. If they are same, we don't update the UI. If they are not same, we update the UI. So that's why we use equitable. Now we use equitable also with block. So if you worked with some block applications, then you know that we should use equitable. Now inside this, this int variable is the most important part because this is the variable that should eventually get updated and that updated value would be shown in this dots and then we can style the dots, okay? So this is what we need to do. And for this page, for this integer value, we have a default value or we initialize it to zero actually, not really default value as this class gets called first time. With the constructor we set it to zero and later on as we go left and right this value should be updated and for this update we will call this copy with method so copy with method would also update this page over here this method would get called from ui this method would get called from ui and we'll create a mechanism for it and at last we have this list the list actually contains the properties or the fields so this one so this is the value that should be reactive which means that this is the value if we change our ui should know so we need to have it inside this list because we are using equitable so now here we got the core idea is that somehow we have to update this and we have to persist this update so that our ui can work next time all right now how to let the ui know that we have updated value as well as how to access this value from our ui for this reason actually we created another class which name is welcome notifier dot dart actually you can call it anything it doesn't really matter welcome notifier extend state notifier and state notifier is a part of state notifier package so it notifies the ui that your shared data has a change but it needs to know which shared data that's why over here we have this welcome state because we know that welcome state contains our shared data so this is our shared data over here so this data is inside this welcome state so we let our state notifier know which data should be should change and let the ui know that our data has changed so that's why you have to mention the type but of course this data is separated in a different class over here right so that's why we mention it like this of course you could do it inside here but this is not a good uh, this is not a good practice so that's why we separated our shared data in a different class and with this uh, your code is more maintainable
great now we know why we have this one and it's as we call super constructor the value which is zero would be initialized for page so the default value is zero anyway now we have this method over here which is page changed now page change should grab the value from our UI what value we know that if we do left and right scrolling the page value the index gets changed so that index would be sent to our notifier using this page changed or sent to Riverport actually using this page changed method because this method would be called from UI and that UI would keep track of this index and that index we will grab it and send it over here as a parameter so we would call this one and this one eventually would update the page value like as you see over here inside we update this page over here so this value would get updated so we'll call this one from our UI now how to call this that's why we need to create a new mechanism and for this mechanism we are going to use state notifier provider now state notifier provider is directly coming from riverpod so if you have a notifier and you want to expose that notifier to your ui you should wrap that notifier using state notifier provider so this is our notifier right so we have our notifier over here we mentioned the notifier our notifier is welcome notifier and eventually we return the notifier because you know this section works with this shared data our shared data is in this class so but this one ought to be exposed directly to the ui so that's why we created this one which also means the welcome provider should be globally available in our ui and as it's available we would be able to access this method as well as other properties so if you have this one in your ui you can access any kind of properties or method for your shared state so hopefully it makes sense now why we have welcome state once again I have said that because our data is in a separate class so you have to mention the type the class type or the class name so that's what we have done over here so we have our notifier and our state type and eventually we return the data over here now let's go ahead and take a look at the UI so now this is our UI and over here first we get our provider whatever we have created over here this is called provider so it's globally available we get it first and we save it in a variable and to do that actually is ref.watch and how this ref object is available over here actually our class is consumer stateful class and because of this class we inside build method we can access this ref object and if we use a ref object you can also access ref.watch ref.read and ref.select so there are a lot of properties that we can access now our main point our main target is accessing our provider so this is a provider because if we can access this then we would be able to access this and if we can access this then we can access the page which is inside this uh, class over here which is eventually this is the class and this should be reflected with the change of this screen and would be shown over here now first we'll see that if we change this page if we scroll actually there is a method that's get called now that method name is uh, build login and where is this coming from this is coming from each of this column now each of this column actually refers to each of these pictures this column over here refers to each of these pages over here now inside this column if you open up any of them you'll see that we have a method which is called build login but now this part over here is actually doing the basic UI so I'm not going to cover that one anyway inside this column we'll have this build method build login method now this method has a context index and a string so each of this refers to a certain page index so over here if we open it up we'll see that it has another method and the method has index 2 and down there this one it will also have the same method index 3 so we know that we are already passing the index and so far the index for page view is actually hard coded so we call the method this method gets called over here and inside this we have this page controller now page controller gets the index and then based on that it shows the new page which is like this but 
So far, it has nothing to do with actually state management system. We are doing the state management system just to align with these dots for the changes of this UI over here. So, so far, actually, we didn't need to have any kind of state management. But anyway, now we know that this index gets updated as we scroll left and right. So this is very confirmed. But later on, after this scrolling has been done, inside this page view, this unchanged method gets called. Remember, this one over here gets called first and it updates the index based on the index over here. And then inside this page view over here, on change method it can grab that object so page view and page controller they work together so page controller change the index first and that change index is reflected inside this page changed method and as it does here we first time use our river pod so we use ref dot read method and we access our provider we know that provider can access our page variable or the variable that is responsible for changing this dots over here of course we have to call the notifier object and from that one we can access the properties or methods of our provider so in our provider we have a method which is called page change so this method we call and pass the index so the idea is as we left as we scroll left and right this method gets called and the latest updated index we send over here okay so so far we are good but of course still we don't need any kind of management state management to do that this could be done so far completely without any kind of state management but since we want to update this dots and the color so that's why we need to keep record of the index and how we do that well, this one and this one saves the index right we know that this one saves the index as you can see it calls this one and it calls over here and then inside this this page value gets updated so now we know that whenever we scroll this gets a new value beautiful and this is where the state management comes into play now for the dot itself over here we have this positioned widget now positioned widget for UI but inside this we have used a package which is called dots indicator okay now dots indicator can take number of dots you have so we know we have three dots now how to update the dots position this is where the state management comes into play so as you can see over here we are calling state dot page dot to double but this is just to convert a number to double now this state variable is actually we have over here at the top so with this we are accessing our provider now we know that our provider this one can eventually access this value over here right so that's what we have so we have this state or we have this provider over here and from provider over here we call this page so as this changed eventually we got that page value and we reflect it over here and we style it and that's how riverpod is helping us to do this state management for this dots indicator all right so this is pretty much ui over here and most basic logic for riverpod is inside this build method this uh, getting this provider and then changing the latest value inside the provider and then get that value from the provider as simple as that one so those three things but of course since we are using provider you have to make sure that you have a provider scope that is injected at the root of your application at the root of your application so uh, build method my app my app is the root of our application and inside this we have provider scope and over here we have this initial router this router refers to actually the welcome class over here which is this one and you are good to go thank you